everyone, I'm Heather from Hia Booktubes and today is a romance recommendation video featuring one of my favorite things to have in a romance book and that is no third act breakup. So let me define this for you really quickly. This does not necessarily mean that there is no conflict in the relationship, but this does mean that the 80%, 70%, 90% mark, they're not going to break up for two days or a week or two weeks or three months or a year or any of those things. They're not going to break up, okay? They might have a slight argument. They're not going to break up. They might not have a slight argument. They're not going to break up. They might have a conflict earlier in the book. They're not going to break up. <laughs> I love this and let me tell you why. First of all, there is nothing worse than not only a slow burn but also a third act breakup put together. You didn't get together until the 70% mark and then you broke up 5% later? I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> I hate it and these are ones to avoid that. This is my favorite thing. If you have recommendations for me that do not have a third act breakup, please, for the love of God, all things holy and goodness, please give me the recommendations. <laughs> There is nothing that will have me picking up a book faster than and there's no third act breakup. <laughs> All right, the first one is Elsie Winters. Her fantasy romance series should be read in order. Each book does follow a different couple, but you will have a much better understanding of the couples, their dynamics, and the world as a whole if you read the books in order. That is what I recommend. I will say that the first full-length book, while still excellent, is kind of my least favorite in the series. For no, re no reason. I rate it five stars, okay? It's still very, 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 very good. I still love it. Do not take this as... But just know, like, if you're like, eh, that one's okay, keep going because I do love the other ones even more. I just do. All right, so specifically, we're going to talk about Green Eyed Monster because it is the prequel novella and it is where you should start. We have a fancy world where you have our world, kind of the universities and cell phones and things like that, but also there are paranormals in that and then you have the fantasy world. So the thing about it is, if you have too much magic, you really can't survive outside of the fantasy world. And if you're a uh, paranormal, fantasy, etc., another race or species, if you can live in our world, you still need access to the fantasy world. So it's kind of like commuting, you know, to the shop in our world and then back to your apartment in fantasy world. Um, it's just, it's so well done. I can't begin to tell you how expertly it's all weaved together. But in this one we have a orc who is going to university. He is such a nerd. He's actually only part orc and he still has like the jealous aggressive tendencies but not as much and he really tries to temper it out. He is a cinnamon roll. A nerdy cinnamon roll who can also break your spine. <laughs> He's at university and something happens and he rescues this fairy from being crushed and they have the cutest friends to lovers because they both really like each other and they cannot tell if the other one likes them back or if they're just being nice <laughs> and it's so cute and it's not dragged out and it's just the sweetest cutest thing all of these books don't have a third act breakup all of them are you know couples who work together and communicate and treat each other like gold and it's just beautiful. <laughs> I love them all. Okay so we have the orc and the fairy, we have a siren and an elf, we have a magpie shifter and a vampire and a baby dragon. Then we have a short that is a merman and an elf, then we have a short that is a mothman and an elf. <laughs> And then next we're getting the Grim Reaper that we have been waiting for. <laughs> I love her covers. I love her characters. I love her writing. I love all of it. What she likes and what I like are the same thing, except I just read it and she writes it. So really take this as Elsie Winter's stand account and please <laughs> start reading it. 
Next, I have Two Minute Warning, which is Houston Skyhawks number two by Alexandra Warren. These can be read as standalones. The first book does have a third act breakup, but the second book does not. This is a football romance and is also black romance. We have a Instagram influencer and then the quarterback for the Houston Skyhawks. And her father is a gambler on sports and he's well known in that world. And so because of that, our quarterback is a little leery of getting together with her because it could affect his career if, you know, people start rumoring that he's throwing games for her dad or anything like that, right? So legitimate cause for concern. Like that's a hang up and it's definitely something that you should think about before getting in a relationship with someone, right? But I love the way that they communicate about it. I love the way that they are just like, you know, this makes sense, but like, let's figure out what we can do and things like that. And just, they have such good communication. They are so into each other and they're just like, we're gonna, we're gonna make it work. This isn't a reason not to be together. This is a reason to talk about these things, but not a reason to not get together. And there is a conflict later on. Do they break up? You know they don't, you know they don't. They just talk about it like adults who love each other, who have a relationship and would communicate about any problem that came up. Groundbreaking. <laughs> it's sweet, it's funny, it's steamy. If you actually like football, it's well done in that sense. The author knows what she's talking about. I'm a fan, I'm a fan. Next I had The Hookup, which is Moonlight and Mother Oil number one by Kristen Ashley. This, I believe, was my first ever romance where there was not a third act breakup. It was my first ever Kristen Ashley. It started an obsession on multiple levels. So we have a girl who's new to town, she's in her 30s, and she wakes up first page the morning after a one night stand. And then she and the guy kind of get a little bit of an argument and stuff. And then he's like, I can't do this. Um, so they kind of break up in the first like 10% of the book. He's like, mm, this, I, I can't, I've got, I've got issues. <laughs> well, he sees her again and is like, Th that was the old me. <laughs> that was the old me issue. We're going to make this work because I want to be with you. So she's new to down, but he had a long time living girlfriend who left him and everyone knows they were meant to be together and he's never going to find happiness. Yada, yada, yada. He clearly does. The second she's in town, he's like, I am over it. <laughs> I'm over it. <laughs> so there is going to be a little bit of conflict with the ex-girlfriend, but nothing much. And there's no breakup and there's no him like being inconsiderate. There's going to be one scene where she's like, what is happening? And he's going to explain it and you're going to be happy with the explanation, right? So I love them so much. Johnny and Izzy. I love them. I love them. I love them. Small town. Her sister and his brother are also going to get together. You get the groundwork for that in this book. There's like a grandma figure. There's this found family. There's this wonderful small town, but also you're rich. Um, there's just, there's so much goodness. It makes me happy just thinking about this book. Then I have Neighborly by Katrina Jackson. This is a black queer romance. So we have two couples. One is a slightly older married couple. And then we have, I think they're engaged. So we have a boxer and his fiance, right? And the two women are going to be involved with each other. They're going to become their landlords and they're gonna move in next to them and they're gonna be involved with full support, consent, knowledge, all of that from their partners, right? So while the guys are not involved with each other or the other woman at all, they are in the room for a scene, where, but they are only into their own woman. It's, it's, it's hot, it's so hot. It's very, very hot and <laughs> just well done because you believe in the healthiness of all of these relationships, right? And I don't know how she pulled that off, but she did. At no point did you feel like someone was getting the short end of the stick or being treated poorly or, you know, 
jealousy being an issue like it was just support and love and goodness and attraction and I was just into it more than I thought I would be if we're being completely honest I liked it so much more than I thought I even would there's no breakup right no couples have any issues there's 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 nothing but communication maturity <laughs> love and steam if that is not a selling point I don't know what it is and they had the Duke Who Did It, which is Wedgeford Trials number one by Courtney Milan. This is a historical romance, obviously. And they are pretty young. They're like 20 or so. But they are childhood best friends. He's the Duke. He's half Chinese. And she is a Chinese immigrant that is merchant class, basically. And she is type A and he is laid back. And there are so many funny things in this book that I would just love to tell you about, but I won't, but they're just hilarious. And he is in love with her and he wants to marry her. He's been conflicted about it because he deals with a lot of racism and the nobility and he doesn't really want to force that on her, but also he wants to be with her and she's just like rhythm him off. And so he asks her to help find him the perfect wife and she has her lists and she's going to make it happen. And his job is to convince her that it's her. She's the perfect wife for him but he knows that she will literally not believe him if he asks her to marry him. So he's laid this elaborate ruse and trap and there's um, a festival basically going on in their town and it takes place over the course of the festival. I was so pleasantly surprised when they did not break up when there was no big third act anything. It was great. It was so happy, sweet, charming, love them love them. I believed in their future. <laughs> Next I have Technical which is Cyclones number two by Alexandria House. This is a basketball romance and this is a single mom. She is pregnant when we meet her. You do see the birth on page so if you don't want that it happens. Then she meets this basketball player and he's just obsessed with not only her but also her infant and just wants to make her life better and buy her things and protect her and love her and I am such a huge fan of when you have a rich love interest and the main character is like yes you can buy that for me thank you <laughs> but also if money is the thing that you have the most of then money shouldn't be an issue to give or receive because it doesn't cost you very much because you have plenty of it right all he needed from her was family and I just loved I loved the way that they they gave that to each other I loved the way that he handled toxic family members or anyone disrespecting her the way that he protected her not only with money because you can have money and not be a good partner right just allowed her to not struggle so much to get back into her violin playing and all of the things he worshipped the ground she walked on. He treated her like a queen from literally the moment he met her. And she gave him everything he needed in return. And it, they were such a happy little family with their baby. <laughs> it was delightful. I love them. Very low conflict. Any conflict that happens, they're going to deal with it right away. Then I have In a Jam by Kate Canterbury. This is... A delight from start to finish okay so we have a school teacher and she has to go back because she inherited a farm and she hasn't been back since she was a child and her childhood best friend is there and he has a daughter but it turns out it's actually his niece and he is a single parent and she does not know that he's always been in love with her and he was a kid who was fat I believe and had trouble with acne and stuff and just I love the way that this addressed just the insensitivity that people have when they're like oh look at you you like you're you're attractive now like oh just yeah you're so rude you're so rude and also this drives me nuts I'm so sorry side tangent why do you need to tell someone that they were unattractive as a child? As a child. <laughs> Just, it's okay to grow into your looks. It's okay to... Ugh! 
I just am so bothered by this idea that children should already be attractive and should be, you know, held to society, beauty standards and all. Who cares? Who cares? And it's just people really say the most awful things to people as a backhanded compliment. Anywho, so he deals with that and he is going to marry her so she can inherit her inherit her farm and she is still like unaware that he would literally do anything for her. The being married to her is his dream. Like she doesn't know and he just worships the ground that she walks on and then we have like a five six or seven year old I can't remember which one delightful child delightful child she swears like a sailor and it's so cute and I just love like he's struggling to parent her but is also such a good parent and then we have her relationship with the little girl and his relationship with the little girl and their relationship together and there was this one point where I was like oh this is where we're gonna break up he's gonna be like this is why I could never split my focus between you and my child and I have to focus on my child no 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 he's like hugs <laughs> it's just oh it's a delight and I loved every second of it. I loved them. I loved their relationship, their communication. It was a little bit of a slow burn. Yes, it was. It was worth every minute of it. And when you get that payoff, like they stay together. They stay loving each other. And I love that. I love reading about happy couples. Lastly, I have Haven, which is kindled number one by Claire Kent. I have a Claire Kent obsession, okay? I do. And they never have like full on third act breakups, but they definitely have third act. I think you're gonna leave me. I think we're done here. We've reached, you know, the civilization and you're gonna go on to greener pastures. And then of course they don't because they love each other. But she has that a lot. So they don't actually break up, but the character thinks that they're going to, right? So in this one, it is dystopian. It's after a meteor hit Earth and you know, things got shut down. So they have a farm that has done very well and is a haven for people that um, they can come and stay. And her parents owned the farm, they've died, but she and this guy, they've been running it together for years. And about a year and a half ago, they started sleeping together. The pining, this man loves her. He worships her. Is he quiet and stoic? Yes. He worships the ground she walks on and she has no idea. <laughs> so there's the, like things about the life that she's not happy with, but there's lots of things that she is happy with and she's having trouble communicating with him because she's not exactly sure what she's thinking. She's not exactly sure what the problem is, right? So they sleep together, but they're not necessarily in a relationship, but he adores her with every fiber of his being. And you're going to deal with some pretty heavy things, not having doctors, you have, you know, gangs and things that are going to prey on people and they're not always going to be able to save them. But the third act for this, he comes storming in and he's like, you're not dumping me over this. And she's just like, no, I'm not dumping you over this. <laughs> and sweet she's like 21 he's 24 but also world circumstances and they just love each other so much <laughs> even if she doesn't know that he loves her and then obviously she's gonna find out but they're so freaking cute <laughs> i am a claire kent stan and i think that you should read all of her books okay okay but including this one and that's it. That's all I've got for today. Thank you so much for watching. This is my favorite thing in the world. So give me any recommendations you might have. Bye.